Hi, I'm Tim Burton. This is Tim Burton Almost Live. Got a nice warm fire in the background. Getting ready for PM Expo in Toronto, Ontario, Canada. It's the premier property management show. I am your formal podcaster. And tonight, our episode is with Mike from RM Window Washing. Got a cool drone, goes up and down the side of the building. I think what I like most about Michael is the, his ability to take a risk and to accept failure and success as his own. This is the last of all my episodes with Michael, and I'm hoping that what I'm going to do at the end of it is get Neil Dance from Solar Window Washing and Kevin Stanley from Skyreach to come on the show and talk about their businesses, the comparison of different window washing companies inside the downtown Toronto market. I am Tim Byrne. This is Tim Byrne Almost Live. I'll see you on the backside. That piece of kit is super cool, by the way. Are you consider yourself an inventor as well as an entrepreneur? Or is the inventions out of entrepreneurship? Or is it, I have a friend who's an inventor. No, can't, make inventor. A penny, can't make a no, penny no. worth his life. I have two left but hands. But he invents shit all the time. No, no, I have two left hands. I can't invent shit. Like, but I can think of, uh, I'm a, like, I can think of something. I definitely can. I'm not the technical side behind it by any means. So you, ex- you export that talent out, I, right? I, yeah. Like, uh, what, who am I? I'm just a window cleaner. I can't fucking invent like drones to fly. You told me that in the next little while you're going to um, open up in the U.S. Yeah, under a different company name. Nope, same. A Canadian organization or so. We already have a De- we already have a Delaware Corp. So that company has been around already for four or five years. Yeah, because you need that. So whenever you come in bids, minimum two years in business, no problem. In five years in business, even though I'm starting tomorrow. Right. So, so that company is ready to go. Just uh, the pl- first place I think we're going to go for is Miami. Why Miami? Only with weather. 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 <laughs> But don't they, they don't clean their windows as frequently because the weather's nice, right? Well, because everybody down in Miami doesn't have to wash your fucking car. The cars are spotless all the time. I don't know yet. But uh, I would imagine that right by the ocean, like Vancouver, for example, even when it doesn't rain in the summertime, the windows get fucking filthy because there's all the salt in the air and everything. So I would imagine Miami would be the same. When are you going to start in the US? Knock on wood, if everything goes well, it'll be this fall. When you go down there and to create revenue, yeah. are you literally going to go door knocking? We're going to cold call first, but yeah. Are you going to do it? No. You're going to hire salespeople to do it? We do it from here. Telemarketing? Yeah. Do you have telemarketers on staff? Yep. My sales guys are the telemarketers. So they're not on the road? Uh, they, I push them not to be because the amount of calls you can make in an hour is way more than how many doors you can walk into. And so you'd rather have a telemarketer? Yeah. So, listen, don't get me wrong. If there's a, when we start expanding to Vancouver, for example, I flew my sales guys out. But before I flew them out, they had to stack up their whole week. And they have to show that I'm so not going to Wolf of Wall Street thing in your office. Oh, that's one of my favorite movies. So how many telemarketers do you have in your office? So are we talking about commercial now or residential? Because residential is no more, but residential, right. we see, I used to have 50 door-to-door sales guys walking around the city with those little fucking clipboards knocking at doors. I had an army of sales guys. So commercial for Toronto, you don't need that many sales guys because there's not that right. many customers, not five. You don't need that many. And that's it. And they're just in your office making calls all day. And Or they go on the road if they have to. Do you pay him like you my car and all that shit? Yeah, like a real do. normal sales yeah, guy? Yeah. They can take people over for lunch and they have expense accounts. But you like them rather in the office to make those calls. It's uh when we go through the expense account again, so obviously there's a whole process, but if you spent a thousand dollars to go in harbor sixty for a three thousand dollar account, what the fuck are you doing? Right? So like, right. there's obviously some sort of uh But you find it better controls. value to have uh, uh, telemarketers than there is on the road sales. If I ask this because my methodology I'm asking this for a personal reason or for a business reason, my methodology has always been to have outside salespeople. But you need to be on site to quote because you have to measure. No, we don't. You don't? We don't. We have, we, technology's there. You know what size the glass is. By okay. the way, Stadia, for that matter, out of uh, Stadia door glass, whether it be Ottawa, Toronto, Hamilton, Calgary, Winnipeg, there ain't a building, there ain't a building we haven't put glass in that I couldn't tell you the color code to and what it is and, and, and okay. so forth. So it, it, it isn't, a, a comp. we have a library, so it isn't a complicated thing to get prices for I've just always, I've always pushed the whole relationship side, not the quoting side. I didn't mm-hmm. want to become a quoting machine. I wanted to become a relationship machine. But you can't scale a relationship machine. That's the only difference. Right. There's one Tim. Right. You're stuck. Yeah. You're just stuck. You can only have so many friends. 
You know, how many friends do you have on Facebook? <laughs> like, you know, yeah, you have so many friends, friends, right? Right, yeah. And then you're capped out. I'm all about, I, listen, uh, you know, there's an old expression that the second you think you're too good for cold calling, you're no longer an entrepreneur. No shit, right? I say this to my salespeople all the time. I you, cold you, call you, to this day sometimes. If, again, if it's a massive behemoth job, which I want, right? even though I try not to, but I, I can't stop myself from urging to pick up a phone call because I want it. How often would you call a person in the middle of a deal? If you want that deal. So you priced it. Now, now you're waiting for some answers and some feedback and some negotiation. It's if it's a dollar value, if it's half a million dollars, I'm going to pick up the phone. Even if it's a hundred grand, I'll pick up the phone. Until you get them. Because yeah. I mean, people avoid calls like so that, right? I, uh, listen, getting past the gatekeeper, past the secretary, it's an art. I'll get past. You're pretty open about, as we wind down our hour, you're pretty open about um, wanting to sell your business. Yep. Do you think that detracts customers from coming to you? Why? Why do you I, think so? I don't know. No, no personal attachment to quality? I haven't met my customers in Vancouver. Like, why? Like, uh, so do you consider yourself to be a commodity business then? Like, you know, you're, the price of gas is cheaper at the petrocan station no, across no, the street than it is that's here? That's not how I want to compete. I never want to compete against on price. Yeah, that sucks, right? No. It's not a race to the bottom. But at the same time, I don't think they, uh, the customer expects the owner of the company to come deal with that fucking streak. No. So I don't. And especially where window cleaners, again, it's they don't want to deal with window cleaners. My ideal scenario, and I tell this to customers all the time, is that we don't need to talk. If we're talking, there's a problem. There's a problem. You, th we're supposed to be there. The windows are clean. Here's your invoice. Best case scenario. So uh, no, I don't think it's actually that big of an issue because I, I don't want them to think about us. The second they think about us, it's an there's, issue. There's a problem. Yeah. yeah. I always tell people when, when a customer makes it to me, mm -hmm. there's probably a problem. Yep. And we're not doing something right. Yep. Whatever the reason, whatever the reason, if they make it to me and they need to talk to me about the job. Right. The only time I want to talk to clients when they want to go drinking. Right. You're talking relationship based, right? I, I don't, well, I am relationship based. Yeah, yeah. I only want to talk to clients if you want to sit on my dock, right. go snowboarding, mountain climbing. Have you ever done heli, heli climbing? No. Own a helicopter in the interior of the Rockies, land on some little tiny piece of rock, and then hop out and scale the rocks. Best fucking trip of your life. Good to know. Yeah, I'd glad if you, there. If you said right you want to go sell. again, I'd be, I'd be mm -hmm. let's go and grab four guys and, and get a guide and go mountain climbing again. I want to thank you for coming in. Thank Actually, you. I really do offer you to come in again. Because as this wasn't recorded the whole time, so, uh, no, no, yeah. because, because I think in a year from now, I, I, I think if you got a five year plan, I want to, I want to feel and touch that evolution. Okay. As you head towards your, and I know that you, there'll be some moments you go, I, I'm not willing to talk about it. I have I'm, a question for you. Sure. Okay. Not business outside of business. Completely. Sure. I want to hear your perspective. Your very interesting perspective. The whole face up controversy. Have you been following it at all or no? You mean the, um, uh, where it makes you look older. Yeah, have you been stuff. reading about it or no? I, uh, my wife did it to herself and well, her you family. Did the whole controversy or no? no? The controversy. Oh, fuck. Okay, Come on, so go. I can't get your opinion. No, you can. I'm, I'm quick to lead off. So, so the whole controversy is that it's a Russian-based company from St. Petersburg and that all that data, your face data, facial recognition, everything is going back to Russia. That's why it's a whole controversy that now all the Russians have all our facial recognition, blah, blah, blah. It's a huge, huge, huge. How do you not know about it? It's a huge story. That's yeah, I... I I'll be, I'll be honest with you, all the conspiracy stuff. That it's not I, conspiracy. Like, sure, listen, all, but all the, all the thought of conspiracy stuff, A, it all goes on. Mm -hmm. and, and B, um, as, a, as a, if you're living with inside your moral compass, uh, you know, at the end of the day, you're, you're, you, you will prevail if you're living inside your moral compass. Them collecting that data, fuck it, everybody's been doing it. Google, I got Google cameras in my house. Yep. Been fucking, I got a Google camera that if you walked in, it knows that you're not a friend of Tim. And I've had that for five, six years. Look how nice he is. Right? And it knows you're not a friend and alerts me. But if, if you, if Alex walked into my house, doesn't tell me fuck all. I read about and that. And that's been going on for, I've had that technology in my house for five, six years, six right. years. So, I mean, my Google cameras already do facial recognition. I mean, fuck, they have her imprint, mine. I mean, fuck, if the Russians want it. Take them. Take fuck, have at it, right? Yeah. I mean, I, I'm not into putting chips in my arm or, Yet. or I, I would never do that kind of stuff. I, I, I just I, talk about innovation. How yeah, the innovator would die. If all your competitors are that much more efficient, you might need to. No, right. I got that. Elon Musk just came out last week. The, the new uh, chip that they put in people's brains that can literally communicate with a computer instantly. I like that. But it's right now it's meant for people with the, like you, Al. That's some black mirror shit. Ow. That is black mirror shit. Ow, that's because that's you're retarded. You need one of the chips. 100%. It's right now. It's meant for people with like Alzheimer's or their brain dead. Ah! Jesus Christ, fucking asshole. bang on. Where's your HR? <laughs> you are the HR. <laughs> That's sweet. You could use that. 
Yeah, I've heard about that technology. Yeah. Yeah. Cause my wife is a uh, deals in dementia and uh, Alzheimer's, right? They have, they run retirement homes, they, right. have, they have floors of it and they're constantly looking for new technology. So read the book, you big book reader or not? Yeah. Homo Deuce. Have you heard about it? Home of Deuce. Homo Deuce. Homo, homo? homo sapien. Yeah. Homo. Ha ha. <laughs> Dude, listen, oh. put one cock in your mouth once. <laughs> fuck. Everybody calls you a fucking homo. <laughs> What's it called again? Homo. Homo, homo Deuce. Sapien. Yeah. Homo so homo because he's homo sapien. <laughs> Deuce. So it talks about the, the future of mankind. Have yeah. you read the book Sapiens? Have you heard about the book Sapiens? I know about the book Sapiens. So that's the same author. Sap yeah. Sapiens about the past. Homo Deuce about the future. Where mankind is okay. heading to. And I was talking about all these things that we're talking about right now. That initially is going to start for medical reasons, people with dementia, this yep. and that. But eventually, you're going to have one asshole says, We'll work in the mainstream. Hey, put it here. I want to be more efficient. So everything that he's talking about in the book is actually happening slowly but surely. Yeah, I, I think the, 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 the world, the planet is into a massive technological revolution. And hopefully, it can be faster than the demise of the human species. It's like they've been talking about, we're probably 10, 20 years away from figuring out how to escape death. Talks about in that book. Because Stephen Hawkins, before he died, had lots of things to say about the planet, how long it had to live. Yep. I think, how many years? Was 80 that? years. 80 years. I think that's yeah. a little bit too soon, but. Uh, he says the population will click over 11 billion people and yeah. it, uh, the world can't actually support that many people. Unless we innovate somehow. Or and unless can. the entire West Coast slips off into the ocean and kills a few hundred million people. Or you start building on water. Listen, we always figured it out. We adapt. Water world, right? With we Kevin adapt. Costner. We adapt. Right. Right. That's it. Michael, thank you all thank for coming you. on the show. I really Makes appreciate sense. it. Uh, you're a fascinating guy and you're my fucking new superhero. You're the guy that sticks his head above the foxhole. You're 29 years old. You're an innovator. You're a creator. You're fucking got greed in your veins. And I fucking love capitalism. <laughs> I really do. I'm Tim Burton. This is Tim Burton Almost Live. I am your Wednesday night. I drive home. Keep your hands on the steering wheel. And remember, if you don't stick your head above that fucking foxhole, you'll never become a hero. Good night. <laughs> Taking a risk is really hard. Failing is really difficult. I find most failures in my life, which I've had a lot to be my biggest successes. I've learned. I learned how to live with inside my moral compass and make sure I do the right thing for the right reason. Sticking your head above the foxhole. It's what I always say at the end of my show, because you can't become a hero unless you do. It's true. You gotta take risks in life. You gotta try things. A lot of people will say you can't, you shouldn't, don't. When I hear those people tell me I can't, it means I can. I'm Tim Burton. This is Tim Burton Almost Live. I'll see you next Wednesday, okay? And Kevin Stanley, Neil Dance. Okay, somebody tell them that I mentioned their name on the show and that I'd really like to see them. I'll see you at PM Expo and I'll see you on LinkedIn, Instagram, Facebook. And of course, you can always go to TimBurnAlmostLive.com and find these podcasts for property managers and construction people for all over North America. Thanks to Filtrex, ProMain, Burn on Demand, and Stadia Glass and Door. See you next week.